What's the point of the sermon? We have Amaziah, who had made some decisions, taken some counsel, decided that he was going to go into a battle, and the people of God that were with him were not enough. He needed to go out and hire himself some friends. He invests a hundred talents into this military. The man of God shows up and says, God can help you win, but you got to get rid of your friends. You got to get rid of this thing. And he says, yeah, but I've invested into it. Yeah, but I've invested money into it. Yes, but what shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel? And the man of God says, cut your losses. Walk away. Leave it alone. He says, yes, you will lose something, but the Lord is able to give thee much more than this. You say, Pastor, what are you preaching about this morning? I'm preaching about the fact that when we, when you and I make wrong investments, when we invest into the wrong thing, and then we realize by the word of God or by the man of God that we've made a mistake, we should be willing to cut the losses and walk away from the investment because the Lord is able. To give us much more than this. You know what I'm talking to this morning? I'm talking to the wife who thinks that her college degree will have been a waste of time and energy and money if she chooses to stay home with her children. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 14 says this, I will therefore. We saw God, you know, we saw some people's will for their life. Let's look at God's will. Remember, this is the Apostle Paul speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. This is God's will. He says, I will, therefore, that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. You know what God's will is for every young woman? Is that she marry, bear children, guide the house. Amen. Notice it doesn't say anything in there about being the CEO of eBay. Don't say anything in there about being the governor of the state of California. Don't say anything in there about being the president of the United States or the secretary of state. God's will for your life is that you marry young ladies, bear children, guide the house. And you say, Pastor Mendes, when you preach like that, what is the, a common question you get? You know, a common question I get is a young wife will say, yeah, but what about my student loans? Yeah, but you don't understand. I've invested a lot of time and money, and energy into getting this degree, and that degree, and setting myself up for this career. And they ask this question, but what shall we do for the hundred talents of student loans? You say, what's the answer to your question? The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. Amen. Cut the losses. Look, you took some bad advice. You went down the wrong road. You invested in something that you probably shouldn't have. But God's word says that his will is that you cut the losses, walk away, stay home. You say, but what shall be done? Let God deal with it. God can help you prosper. Listen to me, ladies. When you cut the losses, you say, yeah, I wasted time. I wasted energy. I spent time in college. I got that degree. Now it's going to go to waste. Now I'm not going to use it. Now I'm not going to be that business person. Now I'm not going to have that career. Now I'm not going to have that. Listen to me. When you raise those kids for God, when they grow up and they rise up, like Proverbs 31 says, and call you blessed, you will be thankful that you made the exchange. You will be thankful that you cut the losses. You will have realized that the Lord is able to give thee much more than this. See, Pastor Jimenez, who you're talking to this morning? I'm talking to the husband who isn't sure. He isn't sure. He actually has a wife that would like to quit her job. He actually has a wife that would like to stay home and homeschool the kids. But he's not sure that if he allows his wife to quit her job and stay home, that they can make it financially. He's not sure that they can actually do it on a single income. You say, Pastor Jimenez, what do you say to that husband? I tell him the Lord is able to give thee much more than this. Amen. Are you there in 1 Thessalonians 4? Look at verse 11. 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 11 says this, and that we study to be quiet and to do your own business. And notice, notice, this is a good verse for young men. And to work with your own hands as we commanded you that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without end. Listen to me. Listen to me, guys. When you walk honestly, when you work hard, when you study to be quiet and you do your own business and you walk right with God, notice the last part of verse 12, that ye may have lack of nothing. 
I don't know if I allow my wife to quit her job. I don't know if my single income can supply our needs. The Bible says if you be quiet and work hard with your hands, if you work hard, you'll have lack of nothing. God will take care of it. God will take care of you. God will take, here's what you said, what are you telling me? Here's what I'm telling you. The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. Say, Pastor Jimenez, who are you talking to this morning? I'm talking to the guy that has a job. He has a career. But his career keeps him from going to church. You got some job that has you working every Sunday. You've got some job that has you working every weekend. You've got some job that keeps you from the things of God. And listen to me, the Bible says, forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is. It's talking about, you just don't show up to church. You just don't show up to Sunday morning service and Sunday night service and Wednesday night service. You go weeks and weeks without church and you say, yeah, but I've got this going on and that going on and I've already invested so much into it. The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. Colossians 1.18 says, but he is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. And by the way, you young people, Look, before you even get into the career field, don't go into some career that'll keep you from church. I'm going to grow up to be a surgeon. Why? So you can skip church every other week? I'm going to grow up to be an air traffic controller. Why? So you can not go to church all the time? I'd rather go get some labor job as a tile worker or an electrician or a carpenter and work hard with my hands and be quiet and study hard and, and, and provide for my family and be in church on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. Yeah, but I can make more money. The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. Amen. And it's not always money. It's not always money. Maybe, yes, maybe you can have your 100,000 soldiers and lose your own kids or lose your wife. Or lose your testimony. I'm just telling you, sometimes we, you say, yeah, but I already, I've already gone to college for that. Then cut your losses. Then walk away. The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. You say, Pastor, who are you talking to this morning? I'm talking to the couple who's considering homeschooling their children, but they're afraid about the cost. They're afraid about the time. They're afraid about whether they can even do it or not. You know what some people say? They say, yeah, but I've already paid my taxes. The taxes provide a public school education for, I've already paid. You know when you homeschool, you pay for your kids' education twice. You pay your taxes and you cut those losses. You pay your taxes and you walk away from the hundred talents and you say, why? Because the Lord is able to give thee much more than this. Deuteronomy chapter six, look at verse six. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. The Bible says you need to have your kids with you when you're in the house, when you're along the way, when you go to bed, when you wake up. What's he say? You need to have your kids with you all the time. You need to be teaching them all of the time. See, it is God's will that you homeschool your children. I realize there are people, single parents, because of the decisions they made in their lives, they're not able to do those things. I get that. But look, if you're able to and you're choosing not to out of convenience, you ought to get right with God. Hey, Pastor Jimenez, who are you talking to this morning? I'm talking to the ladies who have invested lots of money into the wrong type of clothing. Some of you put a hundred talents into the wrong wardrobe. <laughs> And it's a little too low, and it's a little too tight, and it's a little too high. It's too low in the wrong place, and too high in the wrong place, and too tight in the, all of the place. <laughs> and you've got your little pants on. And, and, and you say, well, I didn't know God had, you know, I didn't know. And then one day the man of God showed up with the word of God. You ready for it? Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. The woman... The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. The Bible says there is some clothing that a woman wears that a man should not put on. And there is some clothing that a man puts on that a woman should not put on. And you say, well, how do you know it's talking about pants? Well, is it talking about a wristwatch? Is it talking about socks? 
You, you, you know, for years and years and years and years and years in our society, men wore pants, women wore dresses. That's the way it went. That's it. Look, in the Bible, all you ever see is men wearing pants. And by the way, Jesus wore pants. Yeah, but I saw Jesus. Look, you saw the, the picture you saw of Jesus was, was drawn by a sodomite. And they're trying to make themselves feel better, about, feel better about themselves, so they draw Jesus with long hair and a skirt on. Jesus wore pants. The men in the Bible wore breeches or breeches. They wore pants. Now, the only thing you see men wearing in the Bible, pants. For centuries, men wore pants. Women wore dresses. And, and look, you get all mad. You get all mad when you go to the grocery store and you've got some guy in his wife's, you know, Sunday dress with hair on his legs and a five o'clock shadow and you walk away all mad. I can't believe that guy to be wearing a dress. It started with you women putting on a pair of pants. That's how it started. First step to the transgender movement, first step to the mess we find ourselves today was back in the 30s and in the 40s and in the 50s when they decided it was okay for a woman to put on a pair of pants. Right. Say, yeah, the world's going to do what they're going to do. You know what the world's going to do, what they're going to do, but how about you, Christian? Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10 says this, And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. You know the Bible says that there's clothing that a harlot would wear? Listen to me, young ladies. Are you a prostitute? You a whore? I don't like you using those words. Those are Bible words. The, word, the words of the Lord are pure words. Are you a whore? I'm not a whore. Why are you dressed like one? You for sale? You a prostitute? I'm not. I never. Why are you dressed like one? Yeah. Pastor, Pastor, yeah, but I, 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 I spent a lot of money. Spend a lot of money on this. What, what should be done? What shall we do for the hundred talents? Count, just count it a loss. Walk away from the investment. The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. Who are you talking to this morning? I'm talking to the couple who chooses to have no children solely on financial reasons. Well, we would have children. I just can't afford them. We would have children. I just don't think that we can provide for them. We're not going to have children. So I, I'm a, you know, my wife's going to go on birth control pills that kill kids, by the way. We're going to go on some birth control pills that kill, that take the life of children. If you don't believe me, look it up. Or team me after service. I'd be happy to explain to you. Hey, but we can't afford it. Psalm 127, verse 3. Lo, children are in heritage of the Lord. See that word heritage there? That word heritage, that same word heritage in our King James Bible, the same Hebrew word that's translated heritage, our, the King James translators in our King James Bible translated that word as inheritance and possession. Lo, children are an heritage. They are a possession of the Lord. When God gives you children, those children are not yours. God, God has blessed us with five children. We have our sixth child on the way, and none of those kids belong to me. None of those kids belong to our wife. They are on loan from God for us to return back to Him. Lo, children are inherited to the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is His reward. By the way, children aren't, it's not a punishment, it's a reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. They shall not be ashamed. You know that word ashamed means embarrassed or humiliated? You know God says when you have your quiver full of children that are arrows, you will not be embarrassed. You will not be humiliated. You will not be ashamed. But they shall speak with the enemies at the gate. Let me tell you something. They are God's kids. God will take care of them. God will take care of them. You know, every time, I've heard other pastors say this, and I can tell you the truth. Every, back, you know, when, when we were young and we were struggling financially, it seems like every time that my wife would get pregnant, I'd get a raise or I'd get some bonus or something would happen. Somehow we'd get the money to be able to pay the midwife and we'd get the money to, you know, we'd be able to, you know, we couldn't afford another apartment and then something happened and we were able to get a, a different, a bigger place or whatever it might be. You know what I found out? That those kids belong to God and God's going to take care of them. Sometimes, I, you know, we have a kid. I'm like, okay, God, you got to feed this kid. <laughs> and maybe, maybe there's something left over for me too. 
It's the Lord's heritage. It's the Lord's possession. You don't worry. Look, God will take care of those kids. You, but we don't have the faith to believe that. I'm just, I'm just here to tell you the Lord is able to give thee much more than this. Say, Pastor, who's talking to this morning? I'm talking about the individual who's not sure if they should start tithing consistently and purposefully. Well, Pastor, I just, I don't know if I can make it on 90%. I'm just, I'm not sure if I can make it on 90%. You know what? The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 8 says, will a man rob God? And by the way, that's what you're doing when you withhold your tithe. You're robbing God. You owe him the tithe. You pay your tithe. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. You say, Pastor Jimenez, are you a prosperity preacher? You know what? I'm not a prosperity preacher, but Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10 is in the Bible. Verse 11, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall he, the vine cast his fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. You say, Pastor Bess, can you afford to tithe? I can't afford not to tithe. And remember, remember the God factor. There's no neutrality with God. You're either with him or he's against you. And you either just pay your tithe and say, I believe that God is able to give me much more than this, or you let God cast you down. He's going to get the tithe out of you somehow. Look, if God's going to get his tithe out of me anyway, I'd rather go to support real, genuine missionaries, like Brother Stucky was preaching about. I'd rather go to start real churches that are going to preach the gospel than it go to the mechanic, than it go to the hospital bill. He's going to get it out of you anyway. At least when it goes to the local church, I get rewards in heaven. But do you believe that the Lord is able to give thee much more than this? Who are you talking to this morning? I'm talking to the individual who's not sure. They're not sure if they should commit to commute to church. Because, you know, the gas is expensive. You know, I'm thankful at, here at Mary Baptist Church, I can tell you the amount of people that drive here every week consistently, faithful. I mean, we've got individuals and families, they're just faithful. And, you know, whenever I, I think of them, I pray for them. I, you, you say, why? Because it's an expense. It costs money and time. When you got to drive two hours, you got to start your day two hours before everybody else starts their day. You got on the road two hours before everybody else gets, uh, has to uh, get on the road. Say, Pastor Jimenez, what, what do you think about those people? I think that God is going to bless them. I believe that whatever it costs them, to put gas in that car, the wear and tear on those wheels, I believe that the Lord is able to give them much more than this. And it's not necessarily money, but maybe it's a blessing on their family. Maybe it's the raising of their children. Maybe it's their marriage. But God, look, you just walk, you say, man, it, yeah, it's, a, it's an investment. But I believe the Lord is able to give thee much more than this. Say, Pastor Jimenez, who are you talking about? I'm talking about the preacher who knows that he should stop purposely avoiding preaching controversial parts of the Bible. They're not going to touch Leviticus with a 10-foot pole. If they, if they have the guts to preach through the Bible, they're going to go Genesis, Exodus, Numbers. <laughs> and, and when they get to Genesis, they're like, oh, I was sick in chapter 19. Call in sick. It's like, well, why do you go straight to 20? I, I was sick that week. Galatians 1.10, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Are you a people pleaser? You filled your church with a bunch of people you've been pleasing, tickling their ears, preaching sweetness and light, not preaching the Bible, not preaching the word. What would you say? I'd say, the Lord is able to give. You say, Pastor, who are you talking to this morning? I'm talking to a Bible college student who's at Golden Calf Baptist College right now and Wuss Coast Baptist College right now. 
and he, he, he and he's getting educated and he says yeah yeah I, I'm listening yeah I like to but you don't realize I've already been I've already been here for two years I, I, I'm always going I've already invested a lot of money I'm about to graduate what should I do you know we, we preach a lot about Bible college and we talk about how like the Bible doesn't talk about Bible college you know but we're a little bit wrong on that because the Bible does talk a little bit about Bible college because you know the Bible was written by a Bible college graduate most of the New Testament was written by a Bible college graduate the Apostle Paul he went to Bible college he had religious education he had you know a formal religious education and what did the Apostle Paul say about his education Philippians 3 8 yea doubtless and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win Christ. Amen. Say, Pastor Jimenez, I got a Bible college degree. Count it but done. Amen. Walk away from the investment. The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. Second Chronicles 25, 11 says this, And Amaziah strengthened himself. Remember, they got mad at him. They said, what? You're going to listen to the man of God? You already invested a hundred talents into this thing. Amaziah strengthened himself and led forth his people and went to the valley of salt and smote off the children of Seir, 10,000. Another 10,000 left he alive, did the children of Judah carry away captive and brought them unto the top of the rock and cast them down from the top of the rock. Anybody who tells me the Bible is boring has never read the Bible. This is better than your little Spider-Man. <laughs> they took them to the, to the top of a rock and cast them down from the top of the rock that they all were broken in pieces. You know what Amaziah found out? He didn't need the 100,000 soldiers. The Lord was able to give him much more than this. So here's the question I have for you. Here's a question I have for you. I did my best to apply this sermon to as many areas as I could think of. But I'm not the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit might have been dealing with you today about some investment that you've been making. And you've just invested a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of money into something. And you know, you know, God wants you to walk away. What is it? What is it? Hey, Pastor, what would you say to that individual? I would say this. The Lord is able to give thee much more than that.